Greetings to all attending the 2014 PMI Congress. We'd like to give our congratulations to the board of directors of the Greek chapter of the PMI on this important event. Although we spend much time in Greece, as you may know, tomorrow is an important family holiday in the USA. It's Thanksgiving, so I'm addressing you from abroad. The title of our comments today is Greece's Secret Huge Competitive Advantage. The ABCs of Greece's Secret Huge Competitive Advantage. Our comments will be organized under the rubric of the ABCs of Greece's Secret Huge Competitive Advantage. Section A answers the question, how can Ipsos reveal Greece's secret huge competitive advantage? Section B answers the question, what is Greece's huge competitive advantage? And Section C answers the question, which action items can educate Greece and the world on Greece's huge competitive advantage? A, how can Ipsos reveal Greece's secret huge competitive advantage. Let's start with A. To repeat, how can Ipsos reveal Greece's secret huge competitive advantage? What is Ipsos? Ipsos initials stand for International Public Sector Accounting Standards. Ipsos is the public sector version of IFRS the international accounting standards used by leading companies worldwide and in Europe. Ipsos has a full set of 32 accrual standards and an exposure drafting process. And Ipsos has an independent standard setting board and ensures that the standards are objective and continuously improving. Sea change and the government accounting. Over the past 30 years, there has been a sea change in government accounting. In 1995, three major public sector entities had accrual accounting, New Zealand, Sweden, and the World Bank. Today and in the near future, over 40 public sector entities will be using accrual accounting. Please take note that these countries include UK, France, Austria, Portugal, Spain, Ireland, and Estonia, and I'd like to repeat this. Please take note, these countries include the UK, France, Austria, Portugal, Spain, Ireland, and Estonia. You should see at your table a helpful one-page handout that contains 10 questions and answers on Ipsos from an executive perspective. Over the past almost three years working in Greece, we have found many misconceptions about Ipsos. This one-page sheet answers the frequent questions about cost, timing, and the role of senior executives. As we have seen, step one in making progress is dispelling the misconceptions that are protecting the status quo from changing. These misconceptions have been embedded for years and are the main barriers to success. Video presentations. Over the next six minutes, we will show three short video clips, two minutes each, from highly respected professionals in the field of government accounting. Each will offer their recommendations to Greece regarding the adoption of international accounting standards. First, you'll hear from David Walker, the former Auditor General of the United States of America. Second, you will hear from Ruth Richardson, the former Minister of Finance of New Zealand. And third, you will hear the response that Dr. Ian Ball, one of the world's most highly regarded public sector accountants, gave to a question about Greece when addressing over 4,000 accountants at the World Accounting Congress held this month in Rome. Hello, I'm Dave Walker. I'm coming to you from my home in Bridgeport, Connecticut, in the United States. Unfortunately, my schedule does not allow me to be with you. I would have liked to have done that. You're participating in a very timely and important conference dealing with sovereign financial reporting. I have an interest in this. Why? First, I'm a certified public accountant in the United States. Secondly, 
I am the former Comptroller General of the United States, which is in effect the Auditor General for the United States. I also led strategic planning for Auditor Generals around the world and served as the first Chairman of the Independent Audit Advisory Committee for the United Nations. In my view, the time has come to improve transparency and accountability in general and to enhance financial reporting for sovereign nations as well as a number of the government subdivisions. In my view, the time has come for government to start practicing what it preaches with regard to accounting and financial reporting uh, and related matters. In my view, there's a number of steps that need to be taken to try to improve financial reporting on a global basis. These are high-level steps that can help to ensure more comparability, not only between countries, but also at different levels of government uh, within countries. Some of the things that need to be taken is we need to go to global financial accounting and reporting standards. So in summary, it's time for governments to go from laggards to leaders as it relates to financial reporting. It's time for them to start practicing what they preach. I, like you, know that some progress has been made in recent years, but much remains to be done. All of us have a stake in this, not just investors not just taxpayers, but citizens of the world. Working together, we can help create more progress quicker than otherwise would be the case. I look forward to continuing to interact with you. I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you, and may you have a great conference. Greetings, it's Ruth Richardson here beaming in from New Zealand. I really welcome this opportunity to present at a forum that casts a serious and a searching spotlight on the conduct of public finances. Now, as to the manner of my presentation, well, it may reduce my carbon footprint, but I certainly hope it doesn't reduce my impact. And looking at that landscape and what New Zealand has pioneered, I ask myself this question. Why wouldn't any Minister of Finance in this fiscally stressed day and age not want to use these modern public finance tools and controls. New Zealand has been a leader in the world in the transparency of the government's accounts since the early 1990s. This transparency has a number of benefits, including contributing to our sound sovereign credit rating. And that's something worth, worth uh, chalking up. Why not? an ambition to proactively undertake real public finance reform rather than being forced to take piecemeal remedial action by creditors or rating agencies. And finally, why not execute with the advantage of being able to deploy modern performance management tools in respect of both budgeting and accountability in the public sector? So I wish you well in your endeavour. It really matters to get this real reform of public finances, their management, uh, their measurement and their control right. Thank you. Well, the Greece example is a really interesting one because it was the Greek numbers and the realisation by markets that those numbers were really seriously unreliable that triggered the sovereign debt crisis and we, and we saw subsequently the significant impact that had on Europe as a whole, uh, in fact on the global economy, but particularly on Greece and the consequences for Greece were really very, very bad indeed. Um, what's interesting about that in some ways is that uh, as an illustration of the difference between, so to speak, good numbers and bad numbers, um, the debt to GDP ratio that's commonly cited for Greece um, by credit rating agencies under the Maastricht arrangements is 175%. So debt to GDP is 175%. But the way that's measured is not according to international accounting standards. And if you used an international accounting standards measure under international public sector accounting standards or under international financial reporting standards, for example, the number would be significantly under 60%, not 175%. And the consequences of that for the Greek economy are really significant. I mean, that if, if markets saw the level of debt at 60%, not 175%, 
then the implications are that people will, will be more willing to invest in Greece. They'll invest at a, at a uh, lower cost of capital to Greece. Um, it means that Greek businesses will be able to borrow at more favourable interest rates. At the moment they're paying a significant penalty above their European competitors and that would have really significant benefits and very rapid benefits to the Greek economy. So the, having good numbers is critical to economic decision making. Putting the comments of David Walker, Ruth Richardson and Dr Ian Ball into perspective, let us add a few supplemental points to the comments they made during their videos. Building trust and confidence. The consistent advice from successful global leaders is that building trust and confidence is the cornerstone of good government. Ipsos supports this cornerstone by starting with the highest integrity financial reports. Quality financial reporting can build the trust of taxpayers within Greece. Quality reporting can build the trust of global investors assessing investments in Greece. We suggest you read Professor Jacob Soule's book, The Reckoning, Financial Accountability and the Rise and Fall of Nations. His book contains brilliant historical insights on the importance of good government accounting to the survival of a nation. Better management of government finances. To put the management challenges of the government in perspective, understand the following facts. The Greece government is responsible for managing an 80 billion euro budget annually. The government is responsible for managing over 650,000 employees. And the Greece government is, re is reported to compose approximately 50% of the country's entire GDP. Ipsos financial information will allow for better management of financial and privatization assets and government liabilities. Ipsos financial information will allow for better management of spending and revenues. Ask any successful manager, be they in the private or the public sector, and they will say, you cannot manage what is not correctly measured. Ipsos is essential to provide the correct information upon which to make the most important financial decisions. Ipsos protects against debt-fueled growth. An example is that Ipsos protects against debt-fueled growth. Ipsos provides the information to more clearly see the importance of no increase in net debt. Ipsos provides high integrity net debt numbers. Ipsos net debt numbers can be provided monthly and within weeks of month end. Ipsos can be used to disclose the potential impact on net debt of major financial decisions. And remember, the Maastricht debt covenant stays in place. Difference between debt at fair value versus debt at legal contract value. There are several points of information to understand when comparing Ipsos to the often cited Maastricht debt number. Ipsos debt is on the books at fair value, calculated either upon initial recognition or at the time of substantial modification, both with accretion over time. The Ipsos fair value is the discounted present value of all three streams of future cash flows of debt, the annual interest, the interest on interest, and the principal payment. This is also known as taking into consideration the time value of money. The Ipsos net debt number deducts the value of financial assets to provide greater economic meaning to the debt burden. Maastricht debt, on the other hand, only considers the contract value payment due at maturity. The Maastricht debt number ignores interest payments and the cost of financing the interest payments as if they do not exist. The fact that the present value is often the same as the contract value is because the debt carries a borrowing cost that is equal to the rate at which future cash flows are discounted. Where the Maastricht number falls way short of reflecting economic reality is when the annual payments on the debt are below the market rate. One of the most logically flawed comments is that debt goes on the books at the amount due at maturity which totally ignores 
the two other annual cash flow streams that exist. To highlight the potential flaw of this approach, consider the following example. If the current legal formula attempted to include all three streams to get the most meaningful representation of future obligations, a 100 million euro 40-year bond with a 7% coupon would have a total nominal value of all three streams over the entire 40 years of almost 1.4 billion euros. The importance of Ipsos will become even clearer as we move along the remainder of the slides. B. What is Greece's huge competitive advantage? Now, let's move on to Section B. What is Greece's huge competitive advantage? B. Greece's huge competitive advantage. Greece has a huge competitive advantage, which is largely kept a secret for a variety of practically motivated reasons. But the reality is that Greece's net debt as a percentage of GDP is significantly below 60%. Yes, Greece's net debt as a percentage of GDP is significantly below 60%. And let us stress the words significantly below. The ratio is so low that it is only one-third, one-third of Greece peer countries, Italy, Spain, Ireland, and Portugal, on an Ipsos apples-to-apples basis. Related, Greece's cash net interest payments could be close to zero. Yes, on a cash net interest payment, the number, if reasonably managed, could be close to zero. Even when looking at gross cash interest, Greece's annual interest payments are about one-third, one-third of Greece's peers, Italy, Spain, Ireland, and Portugal. This is truly a huge competitive advantage. I think we've all heard the proclamation that Greece is somehow held back today by its debt. This is simply not factually accurate. There is very little net debt to cut, and there is essentially no interest burden if financial assets were reasonably well managed. Feel free to contact Japonica if you'd like to know the exact numbers. You should know that the Greece debt numbers has been third party independently verified using Ipsos. Greece's unique capital structure. Now let us give the compelling details supporting this huge competitive advantage. Let's start with understanding Greece's unique capital structure. 275 billion of Greece, 319 billion in debt, which is 86%, has concessionary and or rescheduled terms. Unique features include debt with zero cash interest for 10 years, subsidized interest rates vastly below market, massively extended maturities of up to 40 years, debt with interest and principal rebates, and over 30 billion in financial assets funded with official sector loans. There are 104 debt instruments that required Ipsos adjustments. It's reality that a bond has three cash streams of cost to the government, the interest stream, the principal stream, and the interest cost on the borrowing to pay the interest stream when a country is running a deficit and must borrow to pay the interest. Maastricht balance sheets only focus on the principal payment. A special point of note, ignoring the borrowing cost to fund the interest expense is what often brings a nation to its knees as they do not anticipate the explosive compound cost of borrowing. From an economic perspective, they are ignoring the time value of money. An example highlights the economic irrationality of legal accounting. Under Maastricht, if a company restructured a 1,000 face bond into a 40-year bond that paid 100 in interest and only $1 at maturity, 
Would it go on the books at $1? Or would it go on the books at the total paid over the life of the bond of 4,001? To make matters even worse, both answers ignore the interest cost on borrowings to pay the interest. Both ignore the time value of money. We've heard people say, we knew all these terms and we took them into consideration in an attempt to defend the status quo. If you hear the same response, ask them the following question. So, what was the impact on the balance sheet? And what is the debt number using international accounting standards? Be prepared for baseless excuses and attempts to switch the topic. 340 billion in wealth transfer. The impact of the three official sector involvements and the two private sector involvements is that the creditors of Greece have already sustained a 340 billion present value wealth transfer. This can also be viewed as saying that Greece creditors have sustained 340 billion in present value losses from debt relief. Private creditors have sustained present value losses of 149 billion and official sector creditors have sustained present value losses of 191 billion. To put this in perspective, this wealth transfer is equal to almost 190% of Greece GDP. We can understand how this number is not popular to discuss, especially in Greece, as it does not fit well with some who want an enemy to blame. To the contrary, Greece creditors have shown amazing solidarity in providing Greece the extremely generous breathing space to support economic recovery. Greece cash net interest payments could be zero. Now, let's move on to annual interest expense. The most frequently cited number for Greece interest expense is reported under the European System of Accounts, known by its abbreviation ESA 2010. The number is a solid accounting number of approximately 7.3 billion, or 9.4% of revenue, which is in line with Greece peers. But this number only tells part of the story, especially when we hear some say that Greece is suffering from high interest expense and should stop making payments to save money. Such claims conveniently fail to mention that 2.4 billion of this number is accrual interest and not paid in cash. Such claims also fail to mention that the government received 2.7 billion in rebates on interest and principal that obviously would not have been received if they had not been paid. Combining these two unique features, Greece's cash interest payments are only 3.4% of revenue, which is one third, one third of its peers. And from a sound management perspective, those managing the over 30 billion in financial assets funded by Greek official creditors should be expected to show returns similar to the median of public sector entities for similar assets. Using reasonable return assumptions and netting them against the 2.2 billion shown in the table, Greece cash net interest payments could be zero. Look at the math again. The conclusion is that Greece cash net interest payments could be zero. In sum, you cannot cut what is not there. And remember, credit peer interest expense is approximately 10% of revenue. ANFA and SMP payments should reduce interest expense, not inflate primary balance. Let's take a second to look at the ANFA and SMP rebates. As just mentioned, the Greece government received 2.7 billion in 2013, and it is budgeted to receive 2.4 billion in 2014 from the ECB and national central banks. These payments are from interest expense and principal payments made by the government on its bonds. Economic reality and proper accounting is that these rebates should be netted against interest expense 
and not use to inflate primary balance. This should be enough said, as it should be rather obvious. Greece versus peer borrowing cost examples, one of three. Keeping the Greece huge competitive advantage secret has many negative consequences. One of the most obvious is the higher borrowing costs suffered by Greece. As this table illustrates, Greece long-term bond rates are about 580 basis points higher than its peers. This cascades down to the borrowing costs of Greek flagship companies that pay 8.7% on long-term bonds compared to international flagship competitors paying only 1.2%. That's 650 basis points more. This higher cost of capital is one reason Greece flagships have net margins that are 450 basis points lower than their international peers. Greece versus peer borrowing cost examples, two of three. This slide shows a few names on the left side that are familiar to you. Listed are the yields on their bonds versus their peers. The average of 8.7% versus 1.2%. Forcing Greece companies to compete internationally with such an astronomical borrowing cost disadvantage is really highly damaging to the country's prospects for creating attractive and sustainable jobs. This also damages exports. Greece versus peer borrowing cost examples three of three. This table shows data on Greece major banks compared to flagship banks of its peers. Look at the numbers. An average of 8.52% for the Greece banks versus 1.81% of the Greek peers. Banks are fundamental to the economy. Suffocating them with outrageous interest costs is destructive. We would hope their major stockholder would be more successful in educating the capital markets and the ECB on the Greece huge competitive advantage to drive down the government's borrowing costs and in turn the borrowing costs of the banks. A success on this front would also increase the value of the government's ownership in the banks. ECB 40% penalty on Greece collateral compared to peers 5%. Having mentioned the ECB, let's take a minute to discuss how the ECB's 40% penalty, which is in no small part a result of not effectively communicating Greece's huge competitive advantage from a credit perspective, inflates Greece borrowing costs relative to its peers and freezes liquidity. This penalty means that a potential investor needs to commit eight times the capital to buy Greece government bonds compared to the peers. As a consequence, banks, which are big buyers of government bonds, are effectively precluded from buying Greek government bonds, GGBs. The difference of collateral percentage between Greek and its peers is so great that peer collateral adjusted bond yields are actually more attractive, higher, than Greek government bonds. We suggest you read an International Capital Markets Association paper titled, Collateral is the New Cash, The Systemic Risk of Inhibiting Collateral Fluidity. ICMA on Collateral Constraints Highlights. Three highlights from the ICMA paper. Mandatory haircuts for securities financing transactions increase cost and lower liquidity. The systemic risks arising out of regulation that inhibit collateral fluidity will have broad and severe repercussions, not only for the financial markets, but throughout the real economy. Regulation should avoid inhibiting and ideally seek to enhance collateral fluidity. Please ask Japonica for additional articles on this topic.
ECB 40% penalty limits bank investors. To illustrate this point on a local level, compare the ownership by Italian banks of government bonds and bills with that of Greek banks. As you see, Italian banks own 34% of Italian government bonds versus Greek banks owning only 6% of Greece outstanding debt. In fact, most of the Greek bank government debt is T-bills, not long-term bonds. The practical consequences of the 40% penalty are that one of, if not the largest buying sectors of Greece government bonds has been taken out of the market. The consequences of the absence of demand are no better illustrated than in the astronomical yield on long-term Greek bonds. C, action items to educate Greece and the world on Greece's huge competitive advantage. Now that you're armed with the facts, let's discuss what action items you can take to educate Greece and the world on Greece's huge competitive advantage. And let's discuss again the benefits to Greece. C, pick your action item from the menu. This slide lists a menu of action items from which you can pick. There are six suggested action items on the menu and we'll take a few minutes to review all six. Action item number one, support the adoption of Ipsos. Action item number one is support the adoption of Ipsos. You can support the adoption of Ipsos by learning more about Ipsos. There is a one page Q&A sheet on your table that we suggest you review. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us or an Ipsos expert. You can discuss Ipsos within your own network, organize meetings and invite experts to speak, distribute Ipsos material, and or encourage key stakeholders to support Ipsos. Action item number two, educate key stakeholders on Greece's huge competitive advantage. Action item number two is to educate key stakeholders on Greece's huge competitive advantage. As we hope you recall, Greece's net debt to GDP is significantly below 60%, and one third, one third of credit peers. And Greece's net cash interest payments are one third, one third of Greece's credit peers and should be close to zero. Educate the obvious stakeholders as to why Greece deserves to have the 40% penalty reduced to the 5% of peers. Contact Japonica if you'd like to know the exact numbers. You should know that the Greece debt number has been third party independently verified using Ipsos. Action item number three, jumpstart 200,000 to 400,000 sustainable jobs within 24 months. Action item number three is jumpstarting a major benefit of adopting Ipsos and successfully communicating Greece's huge competitive advantage. This benefit is the potential to create 200,000 to 400,000 sustainable jobs within the next 24 months. With a correct understanding of Greece's huge competitive advantage, borrowing cost for the government and within Greece would be in line with peers and cut in half, cut in half. The associated correction of the ECB's 40% penalty to the peer 5% will double liquidity within Greece. As a direct and immediate result, there will be a small business resurgence, the construction market will awaken from its sleep, exports will increase given lower borrowing costs and improve liquidity competitiveness, and the value of income producing real estate will increase given lower cap rates. Action item number four, champion Ipsos and win voters. 
Action item number four is to champion Ipsos and win voters. Although political forecasts are inherently subjective, it is not unreasonable to conclude that jump-starting up to 400,000 new job optimists could add 10% of new voters to the political champion of Ipsos. Importantly, a 20 percentage point swing results if votes are taken from a single major party. The forecast assumes that for each job optimist, there are three related individuals within a household who will be positively impacted. Of the total 1.2 million voters impacted, the forecast assumes that 50% of these would change their votes to those credited with creating the jobs. Action item number five, Ipsos for 1 billion plus in Euro financial decisions. Action item number five is to support using Ipsos analysis on all 1 billion plus Euro financial decisions made by the government. And you should recommend that these analyses be shared and discussed with the public prior to decisions being made. Examples of billion plus decisions which can add up to having tens of billions in euros in financial impact include debt buybacks, government controlled banks forced to sell or swap GGBs, bond issuances, management of financial assets, and privatizations. For anyone who has followed such transactions, you can see how the impact could be in the tens of billions. Action item number six, voice your support for leadership to stop selling negativity. Action item number six is to voice your support for leadership to stop selling negativity and start selling Greece's huge competitive advantage. At this point, we'd recommend you locate and review the following examples a Wall Street Journal special advertising section on October 10th, 2014, selling negative comments about Greece, a Bloomberg exclusive interview with Greece political leadership on October 31st, 2014, selling negative comments about Greece, and frequent comments by political leadership selling negative comments about Greece bank system safety. Greece's huge competitive advantage. To those seeking to deny Greece's huge competitive advantage with the flippant responses that even if Greece's debt is not due for 40 years, it still has to pay it back, or that Greece is simply kicking the can down the road, just ask them two simple questions. Two simple questions. One, what was the impact on the balance sheet debt from the modification of 275 billion in Greece debt with concessionary and rescheduled terms? And then ask, what was Greece's exact debt number under international accounting standards on December 31st, 2013? The responses we most often get are nothing more than attempts to defend the status quo and defend themselves against claims that they miss Greece's huge competitive advantage. Greece has unnecessarily suffered and continues to unnecessarily suffer because the status quo has missed Greece's huge competitive advantage and has instead resorted to selling fear and loathing. Every socially minded citizen of the world should champion Ipsos for Greece and jumpstart the creation of 200,000 to 400,000 jobs within the next 24 months. Greece has a huge competitive advantage that can jumpstart 200,000 to 400,000 new sustainable jobs within the next 24 months. Now is time to judge leadership on how effectively they can educate on the huge competitive advantage and not on how effective they are in selling fear and loathing.
Thank you for the opportunity to discuss Greece's huge competitive advantage. And please feel free to contact us if we can be of any help in selecting your action items. Best wishes in educating Greece and the world on Greece's huge competitive advantage. Education can change the 40% penalty to five, cut borrowing costs in half, double liquidity, and can jumpstart 200,000 to 400,000 new sustainable jobs within the next 24 months. Thank you again.